Hello, Bobby here from Survival Existence. Today we're going to discuss taking uh, potassium iodine in case of a nuclear disaster. Welcome back to Survival Existence. One way that you can uh, help avoid lasting effects or even immediate effects of uh, exposure to radioactive iodine is with uh, potassium iodine tablets. And what potassium iodine does in essence is it goes to the thyroid gland up here around your throat and it uh, takes up the uh, room that radioactive iodine would normally take when you're exposed to it. Um, potassium iodine is useful for some exposures to nuclear radiation, uh, certainly not all of them. Uh, exposures due to not the initial blast and pulse from a, a, an atomic bomb, but the after effects from it, it's useful for that and also for uh, a nuclear power plant meltdown, uh, much like Chernobyl. If there is catastrophic failure, uh, it will also expose uh, the people in the area to radioactive iodine. That's what potassium does. The thyroid is probably the most susceptible organ in the human body to uh, uh, get cancer due to the uh, radioactive iodine being trapped in the thyroid. Uh, and like I said, potassium iodide, what it does, it fills the thyroid up. In essence, it doesn't necessarily shut the thyroid down, but it does take up the place that radioiodine would. And it's very important to take it very quickly after exposure and if possible before exposure. If you'll listen to uh, Norweather radio, if uh, there isn't too much radiation, exposed to an area because radiation does severely affect and disable uh, transistors. That's one of the reasons why it's actually best to have a uh, tube type radio receiver. Uh, it's not nearly as much affected as a solid state or transistorized radio receiver is due to the uh, free electrons that will interfere with the uh, junction in various uh, types of, of uh, resistors and uh, other electronics. But it is best, if at all possible, to watch TV or listen to uh, a radio to uh, find out when you should take uh, a dose or more of potassium iodine. Uh, potassium iodine is not something you want to take all the time, and it's certainly not something you want to take it all unless it's absolutely necessary because it does affect the function of the thyroid. You can get potassium iodine, which I'll show you some right here. It's not difficult to get. You can get it uh, over the internet off of Amazon. And if you live within 10 miles of a nuclear reactor, you can actually get it through government. The uh, US government will provide it to local emergency management officials for distribution to the people in the possibly affected area within that 10 mile radius of a nuclear reactor. That 10 mile radius of a nuclear reactor, I'm not so sure myself that that's quite enough. And uh, if the jet stream is blowing over that reactor, it's going to move radioactivity considerably further, as we saw in Chernobyl, than just the uh, 10 mile radius of the uh, disabled nuclear reactor. Albeit it might take a perfect storm, but I would imagine that a problematic amount of radiation could easily be spread, like I said, during a perfect storm for several hundred miles easily, and perhaps even further away from the nuclear reactor. Um, it's best not to even take a chance. And like I said, potassium iodine is actually only useful to uh, uh, protect you from radioactive iodine that pretty much the only way you're gonna get exposed to it is during a nuclear blast or a, uh, a nuclear power unit meltdown. 
I'm going to read off to you the uh, dosages that are suggested and certainly contact your own physician, nurse practitioner, to find out what dosage you should take. But a newborn to one month old child should take 16 milligrams. A one month, three year old child should take 32 milligrams. Three years to 18 but under 150 pounds should take 65 milligrams. And even if you're a child, if you, the child weighs over 150 pounds all the way to an adult, they should take 130 milligrams of potassium iodine in case of uh, nuclear iodine exposure. And like I said, don't ever take potassium iodine without the only reason. The only reasonable reason to take it is exposure to nuclear iodine. What potassium iodine actually does is takes up the space in the thyroid uh, where radioactive iodine would normally reside if you were exposed. Radioactive iodine, like I said, usually you'll, the only possibility that a normal person's going to be exposed is during a nuclear explosion or a nuclear plant meltdown. It will not help at all if a dirty bomb is detonated. And it also will not help with the initial radioactive pulse that will come from a nuclear explosion. Potassium iodine is for the ingestion of radioactive iodine that you'd normally get after a nuclear explosion or a plant meltdown from your food, uh, through being breathed in through the air, through penetration through your walls and windows. Um, so you're not just going to take it for no reason at all. And during a nuclear emergency like that, if you're close into the hot zone, your radio is not going to work. Therefore, you do need to keep up how much potassium iodine you should ingest. And nursing mothers and infants should not be repeatedly dosed. And you have to remember that potassium iodine is definitely not a cure-all. Potassium iodine is relatively cheap and actually everyone should have enough for several dosages and you can even break the larger ones into smaller pieces to get the approximate amount that even a smaller person or a child will need. This has been Bobby with Survival Existence helping you help yourself. Come visit us on Facebook, come visit us at our website at survivalexistence.com, like our videos and come back to see us. Good day.